Hey, how you guys doing? Welcome back to Mateo Makes. So, today I decided I'm going to finally set up the rig I have in order to raise the roof to try and make it as easy as possible. This is not my idea. I found this idea from another YouTuber that had raised the roof on a school bus. His channel link will be down below just because I don't know it off the top of my head. So, what I did was I found some of these uh, scrap material. Uh, this is a quarter inch wall um, tubing and some quarter inch plate. And I just welded them up together, made sure that they were relatively straight. Uh, you can see uh, it's not quite center. And I did that for a couple of reasons so that this one that's not quite center they could be one plate could be on the left side and one plate could be on the right side so that it stays straight um, I already went ahead and prepped the material um, I took a my grinder wheel and I cleaned the area off because this is galvanized metal um, I want to weld to a nice clean metal get a good bond uh, so today I went out to Home Depot and I grabbed some all thread, like four dollars a piece. I got four pieces plus three eighths nuts and washers. But just to set this up, I'm only going to use the nuts. So I'm going to show you real quick to thread these nuts on to your all thread. Instead of sitting there spinning the nut all by yourself, taking forever, you can take a drill. Uh, this is my cordless drill. I have a wire brush attachment and all I do is I pick between forward and reverse and I'll put the, uh, the wire drill in the nut and you can see that's much much faster than sitting there doing it by hand. Okay so now that we're back and I think I have everything I need. I got my pliers, I have my magnetic level, I have my piece that needs to get welded. My piece is clean. Um, I don't need my grinder. I do have a welding helmet. You should have gloves on, but I'm only tacking these up. Uh, you should really wear uh, a jacket. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up right where we want it. Try to be quick about it. Because it does wanna wobble all over the place. Get it about, about there. It's very fiddly. Super, super, super fiddly. As long as I don't knock over my pen. So, once we have about an eyeball, I want it about equal distance to these two nuts. So, I want to make sure I know my orientation of my plate. I want to put my level side of my plate that I'm not going to be welding to. If I can stop dropping the level, that'd be great too. Make sure the level is the right way up. Put it about where we want it. We want it about there. We want to make sure that it's almost level don't have to quite be perfect. Make sure when you do this, you wear a welding helmet. Oh, come on, man! That's gonna fall. I know it's gonna fall. There's another tack down here on the bottom. benefits of wearing a welding helmet. You can actually see what the hell you're doing. Everybody's working around here today, so you're going to hear some background noise. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a, another tack on this side 
just so I'm sure it won't come off while I'm trying to line the bottom one up. Now that sucker, that's on there. Now when I go to weld, fully weld, if I don't drop everything today. Now when I go to fully weld these in, I'm gonna do a stitch weld. So on the opposite side, it's gonna have a one and a half inch weld here, one and a half inch weld here. So that when I go to weld this side, this middle weld will overlap top and the bottom weld um, just by a half an inch so it will be um, very secure I have already done one behind you um, just not behind you because you're sitting at your computer we're on your phone you might be on the bus and you'd be like how is anybody behind me I'm sitting at the window behind the camera I already did one behind the camera and uh, I really like held on to that piece of uh, pipe and really shook it and it's definitely not coming off now on my welder I have my welder set so that the I have it set to the highest heat and I have my wire speed set to about four four and a half five this is only a little 110 welder it's not meant for doing uh, structural stuff like this but if you, if you kind of know what you're doing turn up the heat turn down the wire speed just a little bit just under what you think it should be uh, it'll burn right in and you won't have an issue so now we are going to use this to our advantage now that this one's in we're just going to take this nut all the way up We're going to put it in here. Now before we set this top nut, because we're using it to hold our material, I just want to make sure that we're not too far down close to the, uh, to the base. I want to be more towards that hole. I think that's about good there. Use this top nut to center the piece of uh, threaded line, all thread. I'm just going to use all thread. We're going to use this top nut to center the all thread. I just forgot I dropped the level outside. So now we're going to take our level and have our top piece in place. We're using the nut to center the all thread. Uh, for the bottom one. The bottom one's nice and tight. We're going to use our left one put it on this side again. Put our helmet on so now we can see what the hell we're doing. We don't have to worry so much about holding everything in place. We have something holding it for us because we don't have two hands. We don't have more than two hands, so I don't have a second person. Speed on there so you know it's not going to move. That looks good. I'm just going to check this one more time. I'm just going to grab my wire brush and clean this weld up before because uh, we are using flex core, it's pretty dirty. Uh, another bolt down here just 
for some building. I gotta go back to the store, but that's on there. It's not moving. I'm shaking it pretty hard. I'm shaking the whole bus. That's uh, that's on there. I'll bring you in to show you what the what the welds look like. Shaky now you can see well hopefully you can see it's a good one and a half inch weld there when I went in I made sure that I moved from this side to this side and I pulled right down I just went back and forth over both material made sure I kept a consistent puddle went right down and on this side Two slightly smaller ones. I did the same thing. Went back and forth real easy, real slow. Make sure I burned into both materials. And uh, the sucker's not moving. The pipe inside moves, the all thread inside moves more than anything else. That's really what you're hearing. So now when I go to Can I get this back on here, please? Now, I have to recut this. There will be another nut on this, on this one, up here. And we'll just be able to turn it with a washer. We'll put a washer on there. And we'll just be able to turn it. And this side, this uh, front half of the roof, will just lift up in the back half of the roof. We'll have the same setup. But it'll be super easy. You won't have a problem. Uh, I think the only problem I'll have is um, shifting back and forth. But I'll need I'll need to be able to I'll need to be conscious of um, once we cut the roof because that's that's really where the, the support is. And uh, maybe I'll put another. Another one of these up there, somehow. And, uh, well, that's it. That's my setup. I know a bunch of people messaged me saying that they had questions about how I'm going to raise the roof or how we're going to do this. And uh, I think this is probably the easiest way, probably the safest way of doing it. Um, and for me, the cheapest way. Instead of dropping everything, I'm, I just might fall today. So, total cost of this is about $4 a piece of all thread that's three feet long. Um, nuts were 40 something cents a piece. Uh, I got the tubing that was scrap. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was like 30 some dollars, $32, something like that. But uh, I'll probably go back and return some washers and get nuts instead. But um, yeah, I mean, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Give me a big thumbs up. And I'll see you in the next video.